What is up, Renaissance crew? I am Devon Da Vinci, and you're watching Da Vinci Reacts. Now, everybody knows that it is Spooktober, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into uh, at least one scary video every single day until Halloween. Um, today's video isn't necessarily scary, but it's related to a topic that has pretty much become synonymous with Halloween, and that is the Halloween film series. Now, anybody that knows anything about uh, slasher movies, especially like the 80s and things like that with Jason and Freddy Krueger and everything. Uh, Halloween was the, the I want to say the originator of the whole slasher genre with uh, Michael Myers and um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, there is a remake that's going to be uh, made and it's going to be released soon. Um, I did react to the trailer. I, I don't know if they had another trailer. I got to look and see if they had another one. If they had another trailer, I'll react to that and I'll probably upload it tomorrow. Um, so I'm looking forward to that because the new trailer, they're taking it back to the original storyline. They're getting rid of all that stupid stuff about the Thorn cult and the uh, the weird third movie that didn't wasn't related to Michael Myers. There is a reason for that, and I'll go into that after the movie after this video. But um, yeah, uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. Jamie Lee Curtis is no longer Michael Myers' sister. They retconned almost the entire storyline, and he's just a maniac who's out to kill people pretty much so let's go ahead and check out this uh dead meat video which is a countdown of the kills in the original halloween um let's check it out welcome to the kill count where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies i'm james a janice and today we're finally starting what has been the single most requested series in kill count history halloween john carpenter's 1978 film that ignited the slasher subgenre you know what's funny i'm gonna see if i can go back a little bit that what's funny is i don't know if it was just like my atsd or some shit or like Maybe I'm just really a stickler when it comes to details, but that pumpkin, the face is, it irritates the hell out of me. It's so like asymmetrical and everything is just off. Why? Somebody should have like saw that and immediately been like, you know what? Maybe we should try to make another one, but I don't know. Maybe, there, maybe there's a purpose behind it. Maybe it's supposed to make you feel uneasy. That ignited the it looks like it's just too happy. It's just like the show before, <gasps> Halloween was not the first slasher ever made, but it was the one that captured everyone's imagination. After producer Erwin Yablons came up with the movie's title and a simple premise, why the hell did I say ATSD? Co writers and producers John Carpenter has and nothing to do with ATSD. Set out to make horror <laughs> history with a laughably small budget of only $320,000 provided mm. by Yablons and the quote unquote grandfather of Halloween, Mustafa Akkad. There are lots of reasons this movie went so far on so little, from the iconic haunting score composed by Carpenter himself, to the suburban setting that, that made the audience amazing. feel as vulnerable as the victims they were watching, to the memorable performances by a 20-year-old Jamie Lee Curtis and the original Ernst Stavro Blofeld Donald Pleasance. But above all else, Halloween succeeded because of its blank-faced stalker Michael Myers, also known as The Shape. Played by filmmaker Nick Castle for a measly 25 bucks a day, the man in the modified William Shatner mask terrified audiences and kicked off the first of the horror genre's royal franchise. Yeah. Um... The whole concept of uh, Michael Myers is a very interesting one because when it first came out, like the idea of like just this silent killer that doesn't say anything, he doesn't run, he doesn't like he just stalks you and uh, comes up and kills you. It it almost like it hits on this uh, subconscious fear that people have of like the unknown and things like that. And it's this is interesting because I was reading an article at one time and they they mentioned like why Americans have this like fear of rural areas and things like that and then they say that in other countries like in uh the uk for example it's almost like the opposite like they they have more of like this subconscious fear of urban area and they said it has something to do with the way the country's developed and like i guess for the for, for america the whole frontier uh era when you were going out west and like there was like no certainty out there and it was unknown and things like that. It was kind of like built on fear. And then they say in England it was uh, triggered by the Industrial Revolution. And I guess that was when England kind of like lost a lot of its power when it went from um, uh, like just an, uh, an empire back in like the early seven like well, longer than 1700s, but up until the 1800s. And then everything changed after like the Industrial Era. Now, how many? How much of that is right? All my uh, UK listeners, let me know how much of that is right. When did um, 
Now, is it true that there is like a stereotype that like there's a fear of urban areas and like Jack the Ripper and things like that? Let me go ahead and get back into it. I'm talking too much. Over the next couple of months, I'll be covering all of the Halloweens available on home video, meaning 10 installments and four. I will continue timelines. to pause this video. On October video, 19th, and the reason I'll do that is so that you can we'll check out the original video. For the series. But we'll and, have to wait for the Blu ray for it to be on know, the kill count. Don't worry, the show. though. Even without that latest installment, we're in for a crazy ride. I'll guide you through the franchise as Sam Loomis becomes a shrieking madman, as Michael's origin becomes yeah, he, tied he up he in was the entire series. And all the times that the series tries to reinvent itself, whether that's as a dude that played Dr. Loomis horror comedies, a low-class white trash hellbilly saga, or a uh, Irish toy maker selling deadly Halloween masks. But before we get into all that, we gotta go back to Haddonfield, Illinois, and count the kills that started it all. Mm -hmm. The movie begins with a jack-o'-lantern and a title card. Right away, even the opening credits are iconic, since they're backed by that dope-ass Halloween theme, and because when it zooms in on the pumpkin's eye and nose, it looks like Michael himself holding a knife. Cool! After that, mm. we're in Haddonfield, Illinois, on Halloween night, 1963, in a first-person POV shot similar to the one that opened Black Christmas. The POV shots in Halloween were done with the recently invented Steadicam technology by cinematographer Dean Cundy, who would go on to shoot blockbusters such as the Back to the Future trilogy and Jurassic Frickin' Park. Wow. He watches our audience surrogate, peeps in, on a couple making out before they head upstairs for more heavy petting. After a stop at the kitchen drawer where Deborah Hill's hand grabs a butcher knife, the first person view sees the dude putting his shirt back on and leaving the house. It's only been a minute, dude. Was that one of those never happens to me situations? The camera heads upstairs and grabs a clown mask from the floor, obfuscating our view as it walks into the very open bedroom of the topless Judith Myers. Girl, topless hairbrushing is the best, I'm sure, but maybe close the door for it or else you risk this happening. Yep, this is Michael Myers' first kill, his older sister Judith. And he's such a noob at murder that he has to keep checking his stabbing form mm -hmm. while he kills her. You're doing fine, Mikey. Can you imagine how that would look in real life? Like, you go upstairs and your damn son is stabbing your daughter like this. <laughs> like, why the hell is he looking at his arm and his arm is just perfectly just moving in one line? But uh, I was about to say, uh, it's... What the hell was the boyfriend? Like, are you like a, a two-pump chump? Like, you... By the time it took Michael Myers to go in the kitchen and grab a knife, you were making out on the uh, steps, you went upstairs, and then you already done leaving the house. <laughs> uh. Don't worry. When he's done, Whatever. Judith, everybody has problems sometimes. Everybody has pro a problem performing Michael heads sometimes. Back downstairs so and out of the house know. right as his parents pull up. The extended first person shot finally ends when they demask him and then just uh, kind of stand there for an awkwardly long time yeah. without saying anything Nobody or emoting. Taking the, the knife away from away. him, nothing. Classic cold open, though. Jump to Smith's Grove in the same state now 15 years later on Halloween Eve. It was a dark and stormy night when Dr. Sam Loomis, played by the masterful Donald Pleasance, joined chain smoking nurse Mary. And, chambers and they ran into a bunch of goddamn going to pick mentally up ill Myers, people walking around the streets like a thriller an music and video or something. To another facility. But things take a turn for the creepy when they see that the Smith's Grove inmates are out and about, getting all wet. Instead of being concerned about them catching hypothermia like a real doctor would, Loomis presses forward and hops out to open the hospital gate. That's when Michael Myers hops on top of Marion's car and grabs her by the face, tormenting her mm. until she flees from her vehicle that he promptly grand theft autos. Michael must have been top of the class in the Smith's Grove driver's ed program. The next day, back mm -hmm. in Haddonfield, we meet Lori Strode, a modestly dressed high schooler played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Her Halloween night plans involve babysitting this little kid Tommy Doyle, who's all sorts of scared of the abandoned Myers house. Lori has a key to the place because her dad's a local realtor, but as she leaves it under the mat, she doesn't notice that she's being watched by a shape inside, mm. and a shape outside. Must be one of those interior exterior shapes. The shape continues its voyeuristic tendencies when Lori's in school, staring at her from behind Nurse Chambers' car parked across wow. the street. But while Lori He's busy being an SMRT How smart know which girl who vanishes in. into thin air. Which way did he go, Lori? Which way did he go? In Smith's Grove, it feels Dr. realistic. Terrence Michael Myers would have been like on a complete opposite side of the school, looking at the wrong escape, building. She looked it's over, he'd been like this. Myers is headed to Haddonfield, 150 miles away. Oh, for God's sakes, he can't drive a car. He was doing very well last night. Maybe someone around here gave him lessons. On his way to Haddonfield, well, Loomis at least stops they answered that. Kind of closed that plot hole. And that's where he notices a truck on the side of the road. He finds evidence that Michael was there, but runs off before seeing 
our second body on the kill count, this poor truck driver who Michael apparently killed and stripped for that classic blue jumpsuit. Mm. Damn, man, stealing cars and clothes? Michael's just as much a thief as he is a murderer. Lori walks <laughs> home with her cheerleader friend Linda, played by PJ Souls, who's totally got a problem saying totally all the fucking time. Totally, totally, totally. They're joined by Andy Brackett, played Let's by Nancy Kimes, who credited stage name was, interestingly enough, Nancy right, Lewis. Michael Myers rolls by in his station wagon, keep it at and a nice slow so stalk camera cut off. But that doesn't stop Annie, the sheriff's daughter, from playing citizen cop. Hey, jerk! Speed kills! Michael stops his car threateningly, but after a pregnant pause, <laughs> just keeps on Nah, bitch, I'll show you what kills! Later on the walk home, when he's standing behind a bush, staring at Lori and Annie. But when Annie goes wasn't to confront him, at all. he's disappeared once again. <laughs> Michael does that a lot. He does it some more after Lori gets home to her room decorated with smart person stuff. She sees him outside by the clothesline, then somehow, without her gaze ever breaking, he just disappears. That one doesn't make any sense to me, <laughs> but okay, we get it. He's a creepy stalker. Meanwhile, Dr. Loomis arrives in Haddonfield and goes to the cemetery, only to find that Judith Myers' gravestone has been removed, straight plucked from the ground. She came home. Later that day, Lori gets picked up by Annie, and they're having such a good time smoking a doob and listening to Blue How does he know where she was they buried? They don't notice Michael telling them in the Myers mobile. He gives them some space when they pull over to talk to Annie's dad, Sheriff Brackett, who's checking out a hardware store burglary that like sounds my first like time a very specific hit. All they took was some Halloween masks, a uh, rope, and a couple of knives. <laughs> Wait, why did that hardware store have Halloween masks? Somehow <laughs> Papa Brackett doesn't smell that dank weed in the car, so he waves the girls goodbye. Right I mean, the movie's still a classic, of course. And introduces but himself. Psst, Loomis, some of the look plot behind holes, you, dude. Like, the shape you want is right some of the plot behind holes you. Stand Mike out comes strong. and Sheriff Brackett takes Loomis to the Myers house, where it all went down 15 years ago. They find a dead dog off screen, the first of many, many pooches that Michael Myers will kill throughout the series. Mm. He got hungry. And, uh, eat? Did he eat that dog corpse, or is that a metaphor, Loomis? During a tour of the house, Donald Pleasance gets the capital A act when he tells Brackett about Michael's psychiatric history. I met this six year old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Yeah, some good acting. Now that it's nighttime, the teens of Haddonfield are out to make some babysitting bucks. The kid Michael looked okay to me in the beginning. Annie, and she gets <laughs> he just looked like he didn't know what the fuck was going on. Wallace family home, while just across the street at Tommy Doyle's house, Lori is already nice and cozy, shitting all over Tommy's taste in comic books. Annie calls Lori to tell her that she's arranged a date with our virginal final girl with a dude she's into named Ben Tramer. Pretty much every scene with Lori and her friends involves them telling her she needs to get laid, but I wanted to mention this combo in particular just because Ben Tramer comes back in a hilarious way next movie. Tommy looks out the window and sees the shape standing outside the Wallace home. But when he gets Lori to look, Mike's pulled his disappearing act again. Mm. Turns out he's gone around back to watch Annie take her shirt off after she spilled some butter on it. While he's peeping in, the Wallace family dog Lester comes across him and starts growling. Michael makes short work of the poor canine and kills him. But in case you're new here, I only put humanoids on the kill count. Sorry, Lester. Annie gets a call from her boyfriend, Paul, saying that his parents are gone and that it's bone o'clock. So she takes little Lindsay Wallace across the street to drop her off with Lori and Tommy. The kids immediately get to watching The Thing from Another World, a fun inclusion in hindsight since Carpenter would go on to make his own version of The Thing just four years later, which is still the best horror movie ever made. Come at me. Lori agrees to watch over Andy's charge while Andy takes a visit to Pound Town. The old girl scout comes through again. Andy never gets to fulfill her teenage desires, though, because after she gets in the car to go pick up El Jerko, she's attacked by Michael Myers from the back seat. Oh, he strangles her in a lengthy, silent scene with no noise except for his heavy breathing and the sounds of her struggle until she finally starts blaring the car horn in an effort to attract some help. That's when Michael cuts the kill short with a butcher knife, slitting her throat as Annie Brackett becomes the third member of our kill count. Michael may be good at killing discreetly, but he's got to work on his body blood, disposal since Tommy sees him from the actual actual window carrying mark. that corpse under a bright porch light. Props for being able to open that door with no hands though, Mikey. You'd be great at one of those grocery delivery service jobs. In case you were having you some unpleasant like, withdrawals from a lack of like, lumen, yes, we get a fun little leg, scene where he scares some kids that had bullied Tommy earlier. They're outside the Myers house, daring each other to go touch it like friggin' Boo Radley lives there, when Loomis overhears their names and fucks with them. Hey, Lonnie. Get your ass away from there. <laughs> Loomis is kind of a dick to kids. I love it. But sorry. <laughs> Why don't you sound hood as hell? And her boyfriend Get Bob your ass away Wallace from there. So they can bang there while Annie keeps little Lindsay distracted. Of course, neither Annie nor Lindsay are home right now. 
It's totally dark. So they're content to just make out on a stranger's couch, way too distracted to see the shape standing mere feet away watching them. Later on, they call up Lori, who tells them that little Lindsay is gone for the night, so they escalate their debasement of the Wallace home to full-on fucking in the parents' bed. Also, is that a real pumpkin jack-o'-lantern on the nightstand? Who does that? They have an unusually short sex session, after which Linda is totally lying when she it's says like it that becomes fantastic. a thing. And then she sends Bob off to get her a beer. As he leaves, he breaks one of Randy Meeks' cardinal rules for surviving a horror movie. I'll be right back. After Bob grabs the mm -hmm. beer, we get one of the best scenes of the movie when Michael pops out of a closet and starts choking Bob against the wall. It's a pretty solid jump scare, and the kill is Michael's finest in the film as he lifts Bob up off the ground with a single hand and then uses his other hand to stab Bob with his butcher knife. The icing on top, though, is that when Michael removes his hand, Bob's feet stay elevated off the ground. Michael stares at the new wall decoration with a couple of head tilts, showing he can appreciate his murder art from multiple angles. Linda Vanderklok yeah. is our next hapless I'm not sure how to that's possible, but it is occasion. awesome. It's Ghost Bob Michael Myers. Don't ask questions. And it's probably my favorite image from the movie. It's followed by what's probably many other people's favorite image from the movie as Linda tries to seduce Bob out of his Halloween spirit. See anything you like? After Ghost Bob is totally unresponsive, Linda goes to call Lori. But as soon as Lori answers, Linda so is attacked by Michael, that you, who strangles your her dude with the is phone like cord. Lori hears the noises over the phone. And First, it's it some kind of sex noise prank. But to her credit, she does become concerned by the time Linda is totally down and out for another kill on the count. After she's dead, Michael's all like, new phone, who dis? But Lori hangs up on it. Boring conversation anyway. And back to Dr. Loomis, who inexplicably just now sees that Marion Chambers' station wagon is parked across the street. <laughs> Maybe you would have noticed it earlier if you weren't too busy cussing out the neighborhood kids, Loomis. But now that he knows Michael's in town, he's on the move. Concerned about that moany phone call from the Wallace home, Lori heads across the street to check on Annie and Linda. It's completely dark inside, and after she heads upstairs, she follows the only light on into the bedroom, where she gets to kick off her final girl circuit by finding Annie's body splayed out on the bed in front of Judith Myers's gravestone. And as with any true final girl circuit, she finds yeah, the other like bodies Michael Myers in unlikely cleaning way, with Bob swinging down from the ceiling somehow, and a cabinet door opening on its own to reveal PJ Souls doing a pretty goofy dead body face. The corpses <laughs> scare Lori out into the hallway, where, in a very cool shot, the shape materializes from the shadows behind her. He steps out and stabs at her shoulder, grazing her with a slash that sends her over the banister and crashing to the bottom of the staircase. One of the most infamous horror movie chase scenes begins as Lori tries to escape through all these locations that the movie has done a great job I setting up. I forgot from the, so, you know, the original trailer, but um... I think it's one of the undervalued geniuses of this movie. Lori gets back to the Doyle house and is locked out as Michael slowly makes his way oh, across the street. The audio again. When Tommy finally lets her in, she barks Audio's at him recording. to go hide upstairs. Do as I nah, say! Okay. Leave me! I had to restart With the, the audio. I actually turned the phone line dead, Lori um, hunkers down and grabs a knitting needle. I forgot from the original trailer. Did she lose the uh the scar on her shoulder did it show her with the scar on her shoulder i forgot about it i'll i'll check out the uh, first trailer for the remake again uh, to see if it's on there but um i think she had the scar on her shoulder again i just want to see if it continued on throughout the uh new series that's coming up Michael appears behind her, having come through the window, but when he misses an easy strike with his knife, she's able to stab him in the neck with the needle, which gets him down to the ground. But Lori's a Gen 1 final girl who doesn't know the way this shit works, so she assumes that a single stab has put her tormentor out of business for good. She goes upstairs to tell the kids that it's over and that she killed him, but Tommy knows better. You can't kill the boogeyman. Tommy's right. Michael's back, baby! Lori ushers the kids into one room and goes into another, where she hides in the closet. Michael follows, and we get another classic scene as he violently shakes the closet door for a while before punching through it and turning on the light. It's a good thing Lori never listened to her mommy dearest, though, and has a wire hanger at her disposal, which she turns into a weapon and then uses to stab Michael Myers right in the eye. Michael drops his knife, and she presses on with the attack, stabbing him in the chest with it. This knocks him out again, and gives Lori another false sense of security as she leaves stab the comfort the of the closet. Stab Once again, she neck. consults the children and tells them to go down the street to a neighbor's house and call the police. After she sends them off, she... If you want to know why there's a stereotype for black people screaming at movie theaters, this is exactly why. Because everything in me is saying, stab him in the fucking neck. <laughs> like, finish it. <laughs> finish him. He sits there catching her breath and doesn't notice when behind her, Michael single-handedly pioneers a new workout program. Horror killer abs. That Get that Undertaker six pack in ten set, movies or less. Undertaker one sit up. up at a time. The kids run out the front door screaming bloody murder and since Loomis happens to be walking by, he puts two and two together and heads towards the house. Good thing, too, since Michael has made his way over to Lori and starts strangling her with his bare hands. Right as Loomis runs upstairs, Lori pulls off Michael's mask, giving us a fleeting glimpse of the very plain-looking face of evil in a shot where Michael was placed 
played by a dude named Tony Moran. Loomis fires his gun at Michael, then follows through and shoots him five more damn times with his gun, sending the spree killer out onto the back balcony and over the railing, where he lies on the ground in defeat. After the gun smoke has cleared, Lori gets a debriefing from Loomis. What's the boogeyman? As a matter of fact, it was. Michael's boogeyman credentials are sealed when Loomis looks outside to find that Michael Myers is missing. Mm -hmm. The bastard somehow survives and Wick? is free to kill the once more. Or the movie like ends expertly <laughs> with a montage of all somebody the make a, Somebody splice two scenes together with Michael Myers and, and John Wick. Suggesting that nowhere in Haddonfield is safe from the shape. It's a good thing Michael brushed himself off to kill again, because his initial body count is pretty weak. Here, I'll show you at the numbers. Hmm. Only five people died in Halloween, but that's fine for a first outing. It leaves room for growth. The victims consisted of two guys and three guests. <laughs> you try better the next time, Michael. The edge in this pumpkin pie chart. With a runtime of 91 minutes, we wound up with a kill on average every 18.2 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Bob. The shot of him pinned of to the wall is one of the best shots in the movie, and the head tilt that Michael does tells us everything Worst we need to know. Worst gotta be the about. mechanic. The for lamest mm. kill will go to the trucker, whose yeah. body wasn't even found by anyone but saying, the like, audience. He was just dude. And that's it. There. Halloween came out in 1978 and ignited a brush fire of slashers, and eventually its own lengthy series of sequels. We'll look at the first of those, Halloween 2, next week. But until then, I'm James Agent East. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this week's Kill Count. I want to thank a couple of patrons like Stephen William Swanberg, Gage Hill, and... Yeah, um, I was about to say, the reason why the uh, third um, Halloween movie didn't star Michael Myers is because from what I remember them saying, they said that they wanted the Halloween series to be kind of like... Uh, kind of like American Horror Story, like where every single movie would have its own plot and like antagonists and characters and things like that. So they were trying to re like they were trying to do a completely different storyline uh, unrelated to like Michael Myers and the third one. But then um I guess because of the uh pushback that they got for it, a lot of people were fans of Michael Myers and they got mad at them for doing that. So eventually they just brought back Michael Myers and had to keep it going. Um anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh if you did, I hope you uh you know, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. I will, like I said, I'll be watching a ton of different scary videos th uh, throughout October until Halloween. So that'll be about like try not to get scared challenges. Um, I want to see if there's like a jump scare compilation or something. Uh, if there's a compilation, it's not really gonna be scary because you would be anticipating a jump scare. Uh, somebody leave in the comment section down below your scariest YouTube videos, and I will be reacting to them. So. Uh, be sure to get some of those out there because, like I said, I'm doing it every single day. So the sooner you can get them in the comment section, the sooner I will be reacting to them. They will get reacted to. Um, anyway, that's been this video. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm the original Renaissance man, Devon Da Vinci, giving you the deuces. Peace.